Welcome everyone to another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition it's Dick Tracy, brought to us by Bandai. Based on the hit 90s film starring Warren Beatty, Madonna, and Al Pacino, Dick Tracy has you playing as the yellow-coated detective who's set on taking down the city's big crime boss, Big Boy. To do so, you must solve different cases in order to get enough information to finally put Big Boy away. In order to complete each case or level, whichever way you want to look at it, you must find a certain amount of clues and then hunt down the suspect and arrest him. If you arrest a suspect before finding the clues, you end up failing the mission or arresting the wrong person, you'll fail the mission. You only have one life per case, so after you complete a case, you'll get a password, but until you beat a case, you won't be able to continue and you'll have to start over again from the beginning. Without a guide or using this video, you'll probably have a hard time being able to find all the clues. In this run of the game, what I'm going to be doing is just finding the clues and then completing the case by arresting the right person. I won't be spending the time going around and investigating and trying to interrogate all the people since I already know where all the clues are. I can just go there, grab them, and beat each case. And since the game can be rather stingy when it comes to extra health items or ammo, it's probably best if you find out where all the clues are to just get them and arrest the suspect and complete the case as quick as possible. So here we go with Dick Tracy for the NES. Thankfully, you're always given the first clue in each case. You then have a few options to do. You can look at your notebook to see what your first clue is, getting a more detailed look at it in case you couldn't see it from the first screen. You can then look at also the mugshots of each of the characters that are available to look at or talk to during this particular case, one of which is the one we will be arresting at the end of the case. Since the first clue mentioned Steve the Tramp, normally you would go at the mugshots, find out where he's located, then hunt him down and investigate and try to figure out where the next clue is. But, like I said before, we already know where all the clues are located, so we're just gonna hunt them down. Clue number two is located at the 9th and F pier. Basically, your streets are located like this. From left to right is your numbers, one being on the far left and nine being on the far right where the piers are located. And then you have letters going up and down. So A is at the very bottom, while H is at the top. That gives you the general whereabouts of where you're going to be going. For example, we're first going to the 9th and F pier. Now this is when you actually get to the action portion of the game. You have two types of enemies, pretty much, in the game. Those who are going to actually attack you, and then those who are unarmed. You actually lose health for attacking unarmed civilians, so you got to make sure that you be very careful and not take them out. Unlike other games, like for example Terminator, you could usually then shoot guys in the legs and then it wouldn't count against you since you didn't kill them. But that's not the case in this game. You do any damage to any unarmed person, you'll end up losing health. As you can see, we were able to grab the first clue on top of the crate. You pretty much use a punch in order to get it. You can change your weapons by pressing the select button going from your normal fist to your guns. You also have a super punch that we have that when you hit an enemy with it, will cause them to go flying all over the place. While not necessarily the most realistic of moves, it can help you get rid of some enemies or at least knock them farther away from you so you don't have to hit them multiple times. Clue number three is located at the 4th and D warehouse, so we're now going to be heading there. One of the biggest complaints about the game is the fact that your health gets drained rather quickly by the snipers on the rooftops. However, I've actually gotten pretty good at dodging their fire overall. All the spots for the snipers stay the same every time you play the game and on each case. Having a map located for you will definitely help you out as far as the snipers go. But, if you see a sniper on a roof, just stop a little bit after you see them, and what happens is they won't change their aim. They can only aim in three locations, really. Down, left, diagonally, straight, left, and then left, up, diagonally, or vice versa depending upon what side of the building they're on. So staying in between two points of their fire, just wait for them to fire a shot, and it'll go past you, allowing you easy access to the next street, and you won't get hit by the sniper. 
The clue located here in the 4th and D warehouse is pretty tough to get because you have to make a very specific jump and have your fist ready at the right exact point in order to actually grab the clue. For clue number 4, we're going to be going to the 1st and H print shop. If you're wondering by the clues that we've gotten so far how you actually tell who you're supposed to arrest at the end, the last clue you always get in each of the cases tells you exactly who in the clue itself who you're supposed to be going after. At the beginning of the print shop, head up the stairs and go all the way over to the left and grab yourself a Tommy gun. In case you don't know, a Tommy gun is pretty much a machine gun and will be great use taking out certain types of enemies. The only thing is though, you can't grab it by just walking into it. You actually have to use your fist, or super punch if you want to, in order to grab items. If you're wondering about your health overall, like I mentioned earlier, getting extra ammo as well as getting extra health can be real troublesome. Once in a while there will be health located in one of the buildings that we go into, but for the most part the game likes to put health in buildings that you're never going to be visiting during particular cases. And by going through these particular buildings, you're going to end up just losing more health than it's worth to go into them. For the fifth and final clue for mission number one, we have to go to the 4th and B shoe repair. One of the other complaints about the game is the driving, which can definitely take some getting used to, especially when you turn around, you switch lanes into the opposite lane. But overall though, as far as driving goes in an NES game, yes, there's a lot better, but I actually find it easier in here than I do in games such as Roger Rabbit. In this building, watch out for the enemies above you, and that's pretty much going to be a common theme throughout most of the levels. If you see a guy in a different shirt from one of the unarmed guys, definitely immediately point your gun towards him and try to shoot him from the ground before you get too close, allowing him access to get damage to you. Now that we have all five of the clues, we find out that Numbers is the one that we have to arrest. So now to finish off the case, we have to go to the 8th and J Hotel and arrest Numbers. When you make it into the building of numbers, you'll probably find out, and I think this is true with most of the buildings with the guy you have to arrest or one of the main characters, it always seems to have tougher or at least more enemies to deal with than usual. I don't know, that could just be me though, but that's what it seems like. This is also the first level that has a few dead ends in it, so be careful on choosing your path so you don't end up getting stuck and having to do some backtracking. Thankfully, the unarmed guys, for the most part, even though they're going to be trying to punch you a lot of the time, you can just completely outrun them, so they really aren't too much of a threat. One of the other cool things, though, about the game is some of the health that you can get. When you get a health kit, it counts as an item, and you can actually choose when you want to use it to recover your health. Going down this staircase, we walk to the right and we run into numbers. When you talk to him, just go to arrest and you'll be able to complete the case. For case number two, we find out about a nightclub that's been torched. Now they're saying Lips is the one who actually is the culprit of lighting the place on fire. 
but we're gonna have to gather the clues just like we did before in order to figure out if he was the one doing it or not. In order to get ourselves the second clue of the mission, we're gonna be heading to the 4th and I nightclub. One of the cool things is, when you go into the next case, you still keep all the equipment you got from the previous one. This includes any health items you may have picked up, as well as you also get a full replenishment of health. So far, I've been able to find two first aid items, and these will definitely come in handy later on. When you make it to the end, go below first to grab the clue, watching out for the guy who will consistently be firing at you from the right. Either use your bullet or wait for an opening to run back to the left so you can climb up the stairs and get to the doorway. Our next clue is located at the second and F boiler room, so that's where we're going to be heading to next. Be sure to watch out for the enemies at the beginning that you don't accidentally lay in a shot on them and end up losing health by hitting an unarmed man. There are multiple paths for you to take here, but choose the top path first so you can go and grab the clue. Thankfully, most of the paths all lead over to the right so you don't have to worry about running into too many dead ends during this level. Be careful when you're walking along these pipes because the jumps on them can be a little bit tricky at times. You also want to stay off the ground for the most part because of the rats. These rats can hurt you and they can be impossible to actually hit. Once you finally make it to the door of the boiler room, it's time to go get clue number 4, and that's located at the 7th and I Photoshop. Usually by this point in the second case, I'm starting to get a lot more used to the driving of the game, as well as being able to avoid the snipers along the road. Inside the next building, work along the bottom at first until you find yourself at the first staircase, then climb upwards to continue on. Be careful when you go to grab the clue that there's going to be an enemy with a gun trying to fire at you right near that. We now have all the clues that we need in case number two, so all we have to do now is arrest the culprit, who happens to be Lips Manless, so we'll have to be traveling to the 9th and C Barber Shop once we get outside the building. I have to admit, for a barbershop, this place ends up being pretty fancy. And once again, just like all the other places, it's crawling with bad guys to deal with. When you get to the end, climb up to the middle row and walk all the way over to the right in order to run into Lips Manless, which we can then arrest him and complete the case.
Our next case has a new set of suspects for us to interrogate, as well as of course another set of clues to collect. This one having four different clues that we have to collect before we can actually arrest the bad guy. Our first clue is located at the 5th and C apartment building. Thankfully, the enemies really don't get any more difficult as the different cases advance. You still pretty much just have the normal enemies who can try to punch you, who you can't fire at, as well as the other enemies with the guns that stand still and just keep trying to fire at you. When you make it over here, climb up the drainage system to get to the windows above. You'll have to do a jump and then duck down in order to actually punch the clue. Once you have it, just continue along your path and take out a few more gun guys before you end up making it to the door so you can exit back to the streets. For our next clue, we have to travel to the 7th and A nightclub. When you make it to the nightclub, for the most part, you can stay on the ground, just firing up at the enemies that are above you in the windows. Near a potted plant, you'll be able to grab ourselves the next clue, before continuing over to the right. On the top floor, there is a Tommy gun in case you do need to replenish your ammo. Climb up the stairs here, and jump over to the beam so you can make it to the door to find the exit. Thankfully, we don't even have to travel that far to make it to our next location, which is located at the 7th and D Grill. At the end of the area, don't climb up the stairs yet, instead walk to the right, grab the clue, and then go up the stairs to the doorway. The final clue we need in this case is located at the 5th and G Library. While the last clue is located inside of a library, there's still a ton of enemies that are going to be walking through trying to shoot at you. Throughout the area, there's a lot of ladders in the background for you to climb up to the top layer, but for the most part you can just stay on the ground and continue working your way over. One thing I do find interesting is that the background looks like some of the books have a cross on them, signifying I guess that there's some kind of holy book, maybe the Bible or something, and Nintendo of America was usually pretty good at removing any types of those things in each of the games. At the end, grab yourself the clue and then climb up the ladder to get to the doorway. We have all the clues for the case, so now we just have to go and arrest the culprit, who's flat top. We have to go get him at the first and D basement. The first in D basement can be a little bit troublesome, so hopefully you have a good amount of health or health items when you're entering this place. Not only do you have to deal with the guys with the guns, as well as rats along the ground, also some of the windows they will drop items out of and try to hurt you that way. Just like before, I prefer to stay on the middle or top layer while walking my way through so I can avoid having to deal with the rats. At the end though, you'll run into flat top where you can arrest him and complete the case.
The next case is actually the longest case in the game. There's six total clues, and five of which that we actually have to find. The first one we're going to be getting is a magazine, which is located at the 9th and J Pier. Getting to the pier is always trouble because there's a lot of snipers near that area. And this particular pier is the very top one in the upper right corner of the map. Be careful in this area because there actually are pitfalls for you to fall through and you can die that way. If you end up seeing one of the rats on the middle platform, you may want to wait on a previous platform for them to run off. Thankfully, you can also jump over the rats while they're on those platforms and they'll just fall off and you can ignore them. The reason why for the most part you want to ignore them on the bottom though is because even when you jump, they just keep coming at you over and over again. By far, this is probably the toughest area we've had to traverse so far in the game. And the clue for this area is located at the very end, right near the door. You'll have to drop down to the platform below and grab the clue, and then climb your way back up to get to the door. For our second clue in the case, we actually have to travel all the way across the map back to the first street, where we have to go to the first and see barber shop. With this being the longest case in the game, this is probably the hardest one to keep one set of health throughout the whole mission. Also, this case seems to have an influx in the number of shooters that are going to be trying to take you out in each one of the areas, including ones that fire two or three bullets at one time. To get to the clue to this one, you'll have to climb up these set of stairs, and then make a jump from the next staircase over to the left, to get on to the top platform where you can get to the clue location and then go back towards the door. Our next clue is located just one street over and it's at the second and C auto shop. This place is definitely a pain, it has multiple layers just like the other ones, as well as a good amount of shooters and rats along the bottom. Just like some of the other areas, you want to take your time so that when one of the gunners appear, you won't be accidentally in his line of fire right away. On the blue car about midway through, that's where you'll find the location of the next clue. At this point though, you'll also start seeing some dogs that'll be wandering across the bottom as well. Well, I never like taking out dogs in any video game, especially with a gun, You'll have to take these ones out because if you don't, they can be a real pain when you're trying to walk across the bottom. Thankfully, you'll eventually reach the door after jumping over a ton of rats, and now we can head to the next clue. For our next clue, we're going to be heading over to the 6th and G office. Thankfully, this building's a lot easier to get through than the previous garage building was. You'll have to climb up the staircase though because you'll end up walking into a brick wall if you continue all the way over to the right. I also prefer to climb down the middle staircase in order to take out the enemy before climbing back up and continuing over to the right. 
This area also has the dog enemies, so duck down and point your gun towards the ground, so right before they make contact with you, you can fire and take them out. When you make it to the end, you'll have to climb down all the staircases, get to the bottom floor, and grab the cloak. You'll have to then climb back up and go down the next set of stairs in order to make it to the door. For the final clue on this case, we have to go to the 1st and J basement. Just like the garage, the basement is just as hard if not worse. There's lots of rats that are going to be moving across the bottom, as well as of course the enemies that are going to be trying to fire at you. This is also the first time that I actually used the tear gas weapon, as it can actually help me hit some enemies from a distance. The clue can be a little bit trouble to grab, as you'll have to walk over to the right side and climb up the boxes all the way over to get up to the windows on the top. You'll then have to work your way all the way back over to the left to get to the clue location. After climbing over like a million boxes, we'll make it to the door and we can now go to the culprit and track him down. The criminal for this case ends up being Browse, and now we have to track him down at the 5th and J nightclub. All the gunmen that are located in the 5th and J nightclub are ones that have the Tommy gun, so it can be really troublesome to actually get close enough to hit him with your fist or use your gun. We've also run out of most of our ammo, so thankfully there's a Tommy gun located here for us to pick up and use. The good thing is though, even though the enemies do have the Tommy guns, there's no rats or dogs to deal with, so this ends up being easier than some of the previous areas we've gone to in this case. At the end though, we can end up arresting Browls and complete the case. The fifth case is the final case of the game. Just like before, we start off with one clue, and this time we'll have to track down four other clues in order to get our suspect. The first clue we're going to be tracking down is located at the 7th and A nightclub. Thankfully, our health does get replenished here because we were definitely running low by the end of the previous one. Thankfully, there's no rats or dogs in the first area, so just move yourself across the top and take out the red gunman. Continue along the top path, because eventually you'll come to another Tommy gun if you need to pick it up for ammo, then drop down below to grab yourself the clue. This clue ends up being one of the sets of empty money bags. There's actually three locations for the empty money bags, and I don't think you need all three of them in order to complete the case, but I'll be showing the location of all three anyway. We get the first ones here at the 7th and A nightclub, 
We'll then have to get another one later on at 19 d Pier, and for the next set, we're going to be going back to the first and see Barber Shop. We're once again going through this barber shop, trying to find a clue, and for a barber shop, once again, it's pretty elaborate. The good thing is though, there's just a lot of the red suited gun guys, and you'll have to make it up top in order to grab yourself a clue by going up the staircase on the far right. You'll have to climb up to the middle level and use the staircase there in order to jump over to the left in order to get that clue, and then backtrack to the door once again. We have two of the empty money bags, and now we're going to be going to the 9th and deep here to collect the third one. Just like the previous pier locations, you'll have to be careful with the enemies that are shooting at you as well as the pitfalls that you can fall down into. Once we've collected all the money bags, it's time to move on to the next clue, which is located at the 3rd and H garage. Just like the garages from the previous case, these ones are once again pretty tough. You'll have to climb up the windows above, working your way along pipes, and trying to do your best to stay off the ground so you don't have to fight the rats off. There is a Heart for Health located at the bottom area here, but sometimes it's just too risky in order to actually get down there without taking a lot of damage from enemies, so I usually ignore it. Keep on the upper windows and eventually you'll come to the next clue. Next up, we're going to be traveling to the Agency Bank. While that actually is the first location we're supposed to go to during this case and grab ourselves a matchbook for the 9th and Deep Pier, which sends us along that path in order to find the empty money bags, we actually will now go through that bank twice, first to grab the matchbook and then another time in order to grab the money for the heist. This will give us both of the clues that we're missing at this point, as well as send us towards the path to get Big Boy and arrest him.
Thankfully, overall, the agency bank is rather flat. While you'll have to deal with some punching enemies, as well as some of the weights that get dropped from the ceiling, overall it's not too bad to get through. Just take it one step at a time, slowly punching the enemies on the ground, as well as dodging those weights that keep falling from the ceiling. Near the end, jump up and grab the clue for the 9th and D Pier matchbook, then continue over to the right to go through the door. Once outside, just go right back in, and now go through the area a second time to grab the next clue. Once we have all the clues, it's now finally time to deal with Big Boy himself, and that's going to the 4th and H, Club Ritz. For the final location in the game, there's going to be a good amount of shooters trying to take out Dick Tracy. So just make sure you have a little bit of ammo before entering this area to take out all these guys. Thankfully all the enemies on the ground can't fire straight at you, so you can just duck underneath all their shots and easily take out a line of two or three of them at a time. While I am pretty low on health here and only one more hit will take me out, the good thing to remember is I do have health kits that I can use to regenerate my health when I do run out. Be very careful when you drop down here because right where this window is, three of those weights will drop down in the same spot. While I only take one of them to actually hurt us, you'll have to dodge all three of course. When you make it to the end, duck down in front of Big Boy and keep firing straight at him. After a good amount of shots, you'll take him out and complete the game. So there you have all five cases for the Dick Tracy game for the NES. The little bit of detective work that you do in the game can actually be pretty enjoyable at times. Had they only improved some of the gameplay overall with the controls as well especially of the driving controls, the game would have been overall better received. But either way, that's going to wrap up this edition of Play It Through. I'd like to thank you for watching and of course, I hope you enjoyed.